Then this month, our sermon series is ministry, ministry. And uh, last week, we, we talked about that everybody can come to the table. Y'all remember that illustration? It, it, no matter where you come from, no matter about your background, what side of town you come from, your pedigree, everybody can come to the table and serve in ministry. God has a need for each and every one of us. How do you know all of us has at least one gift? And because you have at least one gift, you need to use that gift for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. So we're talking about ministry. We're going to continue. We're going to add to that today. And I won't be before you long, but we're going to be coming from Exodus 14. Exodus chapter 14. Ooh, that's hard to see. I think I'm getting old. <laughs> Somebody said, don't say that. Don't say that. You gotta, that. Don't say that. Please. Exodus 14. 13 through 15. And the word of God says this. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians who you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? children of Israel go forth. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Today I want to speak on the subject ministry shift. Ah, ministry shift. Now, now this message, let me tell y'all, I, I, me and God, we, we fought over this thing because I wanted to preach something else. It's Mother's Day and I wanted to preach uh, one of those fiery Mother's Day messages and, and God just kept it. God said, no, you won't preach this. Whenever God, whenever we have a fight, God always win. But he said, you won't preach this message today because it's, it's always hard to preach a message that is familiar to the people. You know, I like to throw some stuff out there to, you know, give you those right hooks, those things that you hadn't seen or you hadn't heard, you don't hear about that often. But whenever you preach a message that is common to the people, you've already formulated, you've already went to the beginning to the end of this. You all know this about the Red Sea. But God said, preach this message today. God's people, they have been in captivity for some 400 years. If you don't know anything about 400 years, every generation is about 40 years. So for 10 generations, comfortable to being in shackles, making brick, being in bondage, being told what to do, when to get up, when they can go to sleep. They have gotten used to being ran by a ruthless leader to the point that when it was time to go, they didn't want to go. And many of us, we are saying, well, how does this relate to me? How does this relate to us? How do you know it hasn't been long? We've been moved in slavery, legal slavery for 300 years. Now, you know, some of us, we still are affected by this. We still have that slave mentality. Wednesday, we, we, we talked about, I asked a question, I said, uh, I said, what's, what's, what's your religion? And people, because somebody said, uh, my, my religion is Pentecostal. Somebody said, my religion is Baptist. Somebody said, mine's denomination. I said, no, what's your religion? I said, those are all denominations. What, what's your religion? And they began to say, well, I think we're Christians, right? We're Christians. And I said, I said, Jesus didn't talk about being a Christian. Everywhere he went, he talked about kingdom. Because uh, Christianity, when you talk about religion, it brings about rituals. Rituals say, I have to come to church. I have to be here at 9 o'clock. I have to dress a certain way. I got to put my clothes on. I have to walk in. I, gotta, I, I, I have to praise. I have to raise my hand. I have to sing at this time. I have to give at this time. I go home and when I get off, I leave church. I got It's rituals, things that you have to do or you do not do. But Jesus talked about kingdom business. Matter of fact, he, if you read the word of Philippians 3.20, he says, we are citizens of heaven. 
where the Lord Jesus Christ is that everywhere you look throughout scripture he just kept saying the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of God is at hand because how do you know whenever there's a kingdom there's a king uh, yeah yeah we whenever there's a kingdom there's a king and if we are part of the kingdom that means we're royalty that, that means we are we, 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 we are a prince and and princes and, and, and queens and kings ourselves. Why, if our God is a king, why do we walk around being depressed all the time? If, if, if we serve a king and he rules everything, he, he knows everything, he owns everything, he sees everything, why do we complain about our situation? Because we still got a slave mentality. And God says, you shall be the head and not the tail. God, he holds accountable a thousand hills. Our God owns everything. But yet we walk in defeat. When we talk about the children of Israel, children, y'all already know the text, but I got to give you for those that may not know the text. God, God, God tell Moses, he said, Moses, go and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Moses uh, got, 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 got a stuttering issue. Got, can't, 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 can't talk very well. He And Moses said, well, I, God, I can't speak well. How am I supposed to, what am I supposed to do when I get there? He just says, tell them I am that I am sent you. <laughs> when, when he gets there, he says, Pharaoh, uh, God said, let my people go. And Pharaoh basically laughed at him. And after a while, he come back and God said, let my people go. God had to send some plagues and, and had, had, they had to kill some people. And eventually, uh, God, Pharaoh let God's people go. Now I'm, I'm giving to you plain. He let God's people go and they're headed to the promised land. The promised land is this place flowing with milk and honey. This place is filled with promises. That liberty, everything they want, everything they need is found in the promised land. But because God said that they that they weren't ready to face any battles, they, they could have gotten there in, in between 11 to, to 12 days. They could, have, they could have gotten there. But God took them by way of the desert, which took them 40 years to get there. But as they're leading, God is leading them to the promised land. God, God, God he, he's using Moses to lead them there. And as they're getting to the Red Sea, they hear a sound coming in behind them. The sound of the enemy. And how do you know whenever God delivers you, the enemy tries to come back and get you back? <laughs> Who am I talking here today? You always know when God's about to bless you because the enemy shows back up. God, God, God delivered you from that man. As soon as that husband is on the way, that, that old boyfriend show up, what you doing? <laughs> Who am I talking to with that man? Whenever God's about to bless you financially, and somebody coming, can, can I borrow $50? God just gave it to me. I'm in the trouble I'm in now because I gave you everything I had. Whenever elevation comes, you can always hear the sound of the enemy creeping back in. But God gives us a message through this today. Ministry shift. Whenever you shift in, I, I was I was in my truck yesterday and and uh, uh, I got ready to put it in gear. It wasn't shifting right. I couldn't figure out what was going on. And God gave me this message about shifting. A transmission has a couple of letters on it. All right. One of the first letters you see is P for park. Right. And many of us we can't get a shift in our lives. In our ministry, because we're in park. Y'all know I Google everything. I said, "What does it mean? What is the purpose of park?" It says, "Park restrict an automatic transmission output put where the wheels cannot turn." And many of us, we, we 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 say, "God, I want you to move in my life," but God says, "You got the transmission in park." First of all, you won't serve God. 
I'm, matter of fact, some of you only came to church because it was Mother's Day. I'm just going to keep it real with you. But yet you're praying for God to do something. You want a breakthrough in your finance. You want a breakthrough in your marriage. But yet you are in park. Ah, but when you keep looking at that, that thing, that all that treasure, you got park and then you got an R. That R is for reverse. And, 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 and I, I googled it and it says reverse. It, it, it allows you to go backwards. And many of us, we are praying to go forward, but yet we got the transmission in reverse. We, we, we're going backwards. We're constantly looking backwards when God's saying it's time to go forward. Uh, we were constantly looking at the mirrors. And I, I think it's strange that when they created automobiles that the windshield is larger than the mirrors. The reason why, because your focus should be on what's ahead and not what's behind you. The children of Israel, when, when they get to the Red Sea, they said, we might as well go on back. We should have stayed back where we were. They were complaining, they were mourning, and many of you, you keep going back to a situation that God is telling you to move forward. All right, when you look at it, you look at it, you, you see park, you see reverse, but then there's an end. That, that end is neutral. And I, I looked it up, and, and they said the only purpose for neutral in an automatic transmission is for towing and to be pushed. Y'all miss that. So, so, so in other words, there's somebody in here, you're in neutral. Well, what do you mean? You need to be told. You're hurting, and you need to be told back to Christ. But somebody said, I, 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 I got some church hurt. I, I ain't coming to nobody's church because those church folk, they're all hypocrites. The preacher out there doing this and doing that and not realize that we all got issues, but yet you're in neutral. You're not going forward. You're not going backwards because you need to be told or pushed back to the Lord. But then you have this other letter, D. If you've been driving any amount of time, you know what the letter D stands for. Drive. I came to tell you that you can't grow unless you go. My mother, my mother, I, I bought a new car a couple, about a month ago, and and uh, it's my mom, I keep it parked at my mom's. I live on a dirt road, and I just don't want my car to get dirty. It's a nice car. So I'll leave the dirt road, go to my mom's house, pick up my car when I really want to, you know, want to look good and floss a little bit. But my mom, she, and I, I said, Mom, you know, uh, she said, boy, you can come move your car. I said, Mom, just get in here and move it. You got the key. She said, I am, I'm too afraid to move your car. That thing don't shift right. It got, you got to push buttons to put it in gear. So I go, I said, Mom, you, you got to get in the car. Let me show you how to drive the car. But she was afraid to put it in drive. How do you know many of us, we're fearful to put it in drive? We're fearful to move when God is telling us to move because there's a red sea in front of us. Somebody asked me recently, they said, they said, Pastor, um, in 2020, you said that you was going to publish a book. Where's your book? And I said, the book is done. I need paid the publisher. <laughs> I said, if I can be honest with you, I'm afraid to put it out there. All right. And you know, that, that, that sounds strange coming from me. I'm, but what, what if they don't like my book? All right. What if they don't like what I put in there? I, I got some personal stuff in there. What if it makes me embarrassed? How, how many of us are afraid to move? God has told us to move. What do you mean, preacher? God, God has called some of you to preach. He said, I can get up there. I'm afraid. God's called some of you to be intercessors to come up here and pray. God, God has called some of you uh, to, to, to be a senior, a praise team member. Whatever you say, you're afraid. 
God has called some of you to be evangelists to go out there and preach and teach in those street corners. But yet you're afraid. You're afraid to put it in dry. But then there are some people, you say, I, I'm ready to go. You put it in drive and you don't go anywhere. All right. That's because you got the break on. You say you want to go, but deep down inside, you don't want to go. So the break is on. But one of my trucks, um, the guys that came to me, they said, hey, the truck, we put it in drive, it won't go. And so I went to, got in the truck, I put it in drive, and I mashed the gas, and the truck wouldn't go. And I'm like, this is strange. And I'm mashing on it, mashing on it, it wouldn't go. And I wanted to go. It's in drive. So I popped the hood, I pulled the transmission, the dipstick, and I pulled it out. And there was no oil in it. It wouldn't go because it didn't have no oil. Y'all don't get this. Many of us, we want to go, but we ain't got the oil. And what do you mean about that? We're not connected to the source of our strength, our power. You got to get connected to God. Listen, when you look at that deal, on many of our cars, there's numbers one, two, and three. Sometimes when you get in snow, you have to drop it down into D1 and D2. When you get in mud. Uh, in other words, when hard times come, whenever you get to your Red Sea, don't stop. Put it in D1, D2, and D3. God never promised that you wouldn't have a Red Sea. He never promised that you wouldn't have a repossession. Never promised that you wouldn't get laid off on your job. Never promised you wouldn't go through a divorce. Never promised that you get you wouldn't have any church hurt. But He did promise you that when you get to your Red Sea. He'll be there with you. The reason why Pharaoh was behind them is because God sent them. He hardened the heart of Pharaoh and pushed the children of Israel because he knew that if he didn't push them, they would eventually come back. And many of us, we got some Pharaohs behind us. And it, it, it's causing some of us to want to quit. But God said, I'm pushing you to your destiny. It's making you uncomfortable. It's, 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 it's placing you in a place where you, you don't understand. But God, don't, I tell you all the time, God doesn't give you all the pieces of the puzzle. But as you move, he gives you a piece. You move, he gives you another piece. He got the box. He see the whole picture. It's up to you to move. And today I just want to encourage you. You got to shift. Put it in drive. No matter how hard it is. D1, I'm going to get through this thing. D2, I'm going to keep pushing. I heard somebody say, if you rearrange depression, it spells I press on. I don't know who that was for, but I came to encourage you to press on. Keep on serving. God began to talk to Moses. Moses cried out to God. The people cried out to God. God, you brought us all the way out here to die. And God says, Moses, tell the people just to move forward. Look and use what's in your hand. In other words, everything you need to move forward, God has already equipped you with that. Matter of fact, he said, I brought you to it just so you can understand that, there's, that you have everything you need on the inside of you. I've equipped you to get through that Red Sea. So today, 
ministry shift. Now it's time to get busy. Yeah. I, I didn't come here to hit them hard every day. I just came to tell you, keep pushing. One of my favorite stories was about a grandfather who took his granddaughter out for a drive, teaching her how to drive a car. And they're driving down through the country roads. And the granddaughter, she's doing wonderful. The grandfather, he's encouraging her. Baby, you're doing so well. He said, we get up here, I want you to get on the interstate. She said, granddad, the interstate? I ain't never, I've never driven on the interstate. He said, baby, you got this. Get on the interstate. They get on the interstate, and as they're driving down the interstate, it starts raining. And the granddaughter, she's, she has a tear to two granddad, we need to stop. I, I, it's raining outside. He said, baby, just keep on going. And she keeps going. It gets harder and harder. It's now it's thunder, it's lightning. And it's raining so hard that she can barely see the road. And she said, Granddad, can I just pull over? Can I just pull? I just want to stop. And the granddad said, baby, just keep on going. Just keep on going. And by and by, the rain stopped. And the grandfather said, baby, pull over. She said, Granddad, we already made through the rain. You didn't let me pull over back there. Why are you telling me to pull over now? He said, baby, I want to show you something. He said, get out. He said, look back. He said, you see all those cars that pull they still in the storm. They still in the rain. But because you kept on moving, because you kept on pressing, because you pressed on, he said you got through the storm. And I just want to encourage somebody here today. Keep on moving. Whatever the time, God will. He will take good care of you. Lord, I'll always be with you to the ends of the earth. No matter how low you go, no matter how high you get, God said, I'll be with you. Ministry shift. Father God, we thank you today for your holy word. God, help us to drive. Help us to drive, God. No matter what, no matter what it is that we're up against, Satan has come to steal, kill, and destroy. The battlefield of the mind, God. Help us to drive in our mind, God. Get us out of neutral, God. God, get us out of park, God. Get us out of reverse, God. Help us to move forward, God. God, we need you today. God, I pray, God, that as your people are praying right now, that you will meet us. You're able to, God, answer my prayer just like you're able to answer their prayers all at the same time, God. Hear their faint and cry. God, I ask that you would deliver whatever stumbling block that's in their way. God, I'm not going to ask you to move it, but I'm going to ask you to help them to get through it. Get through it, Red Sea, God. That test that we keep failing over and over again. God, let us know, God, we're going to continue to stay in the classroom and continue to take that test until we pass it. So, God, just remind us today that it's an open book test. That all we have to do, God, is just be obedient to your word. And the battle has already been won. You said, God, this battle, we won't have to fight. All we got to do is just drive. So, God, we thank you for the encouragement today. Thank you, God. It's already done. It's not on the way. It's not down the road, but God, it's already here. Healing is here, God. God, we speak against depression. We speak against anxiety, God. We speak against the fear, God. You have not given us a spirit of fear, God. But we ask that you just have your way, God. In our lives, we tell you thank you. We pray for every lost soul that's on the sound of our voice. Those that are watching this live, God, speak to them as well. If there's somebody here today that don't know you in the heart of sin, God, I ask God that you would draw them. That you would draw them, Lord God. They may say, what must I do to be saved? God, you give us the answer. God, you said if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart. Jesus died for our sins, but he was risen that early Sunday morning. He sitting at the right hand of the Father God and he sent his helper called the Holy Ghost. For every born again Christian God, 
we have a helper. We have a counselor who leads us to God. And God, so God, I pray for every lost soul today. Move upon the hearts of your people to come to you. We tell you thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Come on and put your hands together today. Hallelujah. Listen, we saw we held you a little longer today, but we just we had to let God have his way today. Amen. Amen. Listen, we want to give that invitation, maybe the to that person that say, hey, I don't know the Lord. We cannot assume everybody here is saved. Because I want to get my life to Christ. If that's you today, just slip that hand up. Salvation. We'll talk you through it. We'll walk you through it. That hand, lift that hand up as a savior. We'll have a one-on-one and sit down with you and get you there. Salvation. Maybe there's somebody today who say, hey, I want to partner with Greater Love Fellowship. I just love this ministry. I just love the people. I love what you're about. I love the mission. I love the purpose. And I just want to be connected to it. That's you today. We tell you, you can be a member somewhere else, but partner with us. If that's your name, raise your hand. We're going to be one to partnership. Salvation partnership. Baptism. Say, I want to be baptized. If you're watching us live, you say you want to accept Christ, you want to be a partner, please message us, message us, we'll be get back with you and our soonest. Amen. Well, praise God. Everybody stand to your feet. Please go back to our, we thank our hospitality team. Can we praise God for them? Every Sunday morning they have snacks, they have healthy snacks, fruit, juice, water. We want to thank God for them. Please go back there and, and partake in uh, those things. And we have t-shirts. Uh, but we just want to thank all of our ministry partners. Amen. If you want to give on your way out, see our hospitality on the way out. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, Abel, I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Come on, look at another neighbor and say, Abel, I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. May God bless you. May God keep you. Is our prayer. Go in peace.